Governor Hamilton? Angela. Mr. Hamilton. Angela. I demand to know what the wife of a high-ranking British officer is doing in this camp. Perhaps you'd better ask her, Governor. My dear? Mr. Hamilton, please sit down. I prefer to stand, uh, and I, I won't be here very long. You wanted to know what I'm doing here. It's quite simple. I came to find you. We've been worried since you were captured. Very worried. Utter nonsense, Mrs. Lackland. Either give me an explanation I can believe, or I shall be forced to form my own opinion. And just what would your opinion be, Governor? I should say it rather smelled of treason. Then treason it is. I came here to help my husband, Mr. Hamilton. He plans to surrender Fort Detroit to the Americans. Surely you're not serious. Oh, but I am. Betray Detroit? But why? Why? Perhaps as a woman I should like to see this senseless war come to an end. But this is treason. I thought you wouldn't understand that, Governor. Is it easier for you to believe that we're doing it for the rather substantial reward the Americans have offered us? You can't do this! Easy, sir. Guards! See the succeed. governor back to his court. You'll never succeed. But even if you do, neither you nor your husband will ever dare set foot on English soil again. With your permission, Major, I'd like to return to my quarters. Certainly. Thank you for coming. Come out now, Mr. Boone. A real calculating woman. I didn't have her for an enemy. Are you convinced that she means it? Well, she said so plain enough, so I reckon I'll have to believe her. Good. Mrs. Lackland is on the way to join her husband in Detroit. You'll accompany her as a guide. Once there, Colonel Lackland will furnish you with plans of the fort's defenses and whatever other information he considers valuable. Is it all right if I take a friend along? As protection against Mrs. Lackland? I might need it. Take anyone you want. Here are your orders. Now, about the plans. I want them delivered to me before I cross the mountains. With them, Washington will give me everything I need to move against Detroit. You're going to be on the move, too. Where will we meet? I'll wait for you here. Or you wait for me. Kanawha Pass. All right. I'll meet you there. Crowds to follow, no one to turn to, advice, 
He has to be completely self-reliant. Don't you find that true, Mr. Boone? I haven't thought much about it, ma'am. No, of course you wouldn't. Here a man's thoughts would have no cause to turn inward. Self-doubt and invidious comparisons with others. Well, they're products of civilization, wouldn't you say so, Mr. Boone? Here's your bag, ma'am. What are we stopping here for? I swear we change rivers. All right, Kelly, let's pick her up. Golly, won't you stay down here and see if you can catch a mess of fish? I'll take the gear and Ms. Lackland up there at the rocks and make camp. Might even whip up a batch of biscuits. Biscuits? biscuits? Please, Mr. Boone, why don't you both go fishing? I'll make the biscuits. I'm still trying to digest those last little stones you cooked the first night out. Well, in that case, I'll try for a turkey. No, thank you. I finished. Uh, anybody care for any more biscuits? Yes, you do, Mr. Cully. Please eat them. Uh, Dan? All yours, Cully. Uh, it's mighty good biscuits. I mean, they're about the best I ever taste, especially when I've been traveling with Dan. <coughs> Of course, uh, <clears throat> this turkey grease is pretty good, too, Dan. I mean, uh, <clears throat> especially with these biscuits. Well, Cully, turkey grease just is. I didn't have anything to do with it. Mr. Boone shies away from approbation, no matter what the source. Are you always so taciturn, Mr. Boone? Well, I reckon I talk as much as most men. It's just that uh, I'm not too happy with this chore, and I kind of like to keep it on it business-like basis. But how strange that you should be unhappy. Maybe uneasy would be a better word for it. Are we violating one of your tenets of honor, Mr. Boone? I mean an Englishman in a position of trust betraying his own country. Such a provincial attitude. Well, what about Count Pulaski? And Kosciuszko, are they fighting for Poland? And the Marquis de Lafayette, is he fighting for France? No, they're fighting for America. So why should my husband have to fight for England just because he is English? Don't you want him on your side? I don't know, ma'am. I haven't met him yet. But your reasoning process, or perhaps I should say your lack of one, well, it frightens me. My husband and I are risking our lives to aid your cause. And if you feel this way, how can I be sure you'll even accept the documents my husband plans to turn over to you? Oh, I reckon I'll have to do that. And if you feel honorable in accepting them, why should he be dishonorable in handing them over? I appeal to you, Mr. Cully. Uh, please, ma'am, I'd uh, just like to keep out of this ring. <laughs> why can't you see the truth, Mr. Boone? My husband's act means that Fort Detroit can fall without a shot being fired, without one life being lost, not one drop of blood being shed. Well, far from being treason, I call that the noblest form of humanitarianism. Ma'am, you talk as if I were arguing with you. Now, there's your bunk, and I suggest you take advantage of it. The canoe part of this trip is almost over, and from then on, it's just going to be walking. We're that close to the fort? Yes, ma'am, we are. We should be there tomorrow afternoon. Good night, Mrs. Lackland. Good night, Mr. Boone.
necessary, Mr. Boone. That man is an English soldier. All I had to do was to tell him I'm Colonel Lackland's wife. Not that idiot. Why, do you know him? That's many lives. The Iroquois bloodhound. If he were to see me, chances are we'd all be here. Well, what are you going to do about it? You can't stay here. Well, I aim to stay right here. And, Cully, you take her into the fort. It's your husband who's going to turn those plans over to us. You can bring him back here to me. You don't trust us, do you, Mr. Boone? Well, I still haven't seen those plans yet. Cully, remember, you brought Mrs. Lackland here from Montreal all by yourself. I hope he knows what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. Well, ma'am, the next move is up to you. Angela. Oh, you don't know what it was to wait so long. I'm back now, Richard. <coughs> Darling, um, this is Mr. Cully. Uh, from Montreal, sir. This man was your only escort? You see the man our friend sent? Can we go to your quarters? Come along, Mr. Cully. You must be utterly exhausted coming all that way through the wilderness. I gather the principal agent is elsewhere. Yes, he recognized a savage who knew him in the fort, and now he's waiting outside to meet you. His name? Daniel Boone. And I don't think he quite trusts us. Well, and what about you? Oh, I'm just obeying orders. Good fellow, I appreciate a man who obeys orders. And the best way to win the trust of your companion, I would say, would be to follow my part of the bargain at once. I have everything that I promised here. Take me to Mr. Boone. We'll settle this business at once. Uh, but, sir, don't you think that it'd be safer to wait till dark? I mean, you know, it's only a little while. You see, darling, both the Americans have a preconceived idea about the baseness of our conduct. It makes them behave in a most guilty manner. Just... Worried about my neck, man. What, uh, what are you going to do if anybody recognizes you with Boone? It's the simplest thing in the world. I'm a grateful husband who wishes to thank in person the intrepid guide who brought my wife safely through the wilderness. And since he cannot endure the sight of civilization, I must go to him in his native habitat. Who could quarrel with that? Come along. Oh, Angela, darling. Your trunks arrived several days ago, and I fixed up the bedroom for you. Do tidy up a bit. We're expecting Governor Carlton at any moment. Oh. And what's the governor of Quebec doing here in Detroit? I rather suspect he's here to see how I'm running things since Hamilton was captured. This will be very charming to him. over, Mr. Boone. A map of the fort's defenses, both inside and out, together with an inventory of weapons and munitions and a complete list of personnel and their functions. I've placed my life in your hands. Are you convinced now that you can trust me? Just sit down and rest, Colonel, while I take a look at this. You'll be returning to Major Grayson at once, I trust. You know, it would have been better had the American troops accompanied you so that I might effect a bloodless surrender right now. But I suppose the Major is encumbered with his prisoners. You know, I can't help but feel sorry for Lieutenant Governor Hamilton. He's a very decent fellow. 
Do your people really believe that he offered the Indians a bounty for every settler's scalp they brought in? I'm afraid they do. Ah, it's impossible. I know the man, you see. After my defection, I hope I shall be able to testify as to his good character. I doubt that your testimony will be worth much, Colonel. You mean because of my defection? My wife was right. You do believe I'm doing a dishonorable thing. Let's just say I don't understand it. But if you're going to give us Fort Detroit, we'll take it. And you'll get whatever was promised to you. All right, you'll have what you came for. When shall I expect the American attack? You'll be notified in time, Colonel. Right now, I'd like for you to come down to the river and point out some of those emplacements. I can assure you that map is correct. All right, let's be quick about it. What's happening? Fire! It's Governor Carlton. He's arrived and they're giving him a salute. I have to be there. Boone, I can assure you those documents are correct. Now get out of here quickly. Let's return to the fort. He acts real worried, don't he? The more worried he acts, the better I like it. I'm beginning to think these documents are the real thing. Dan, you're a real suspicious man. Just careful. We're not so rushed that we can't take time to wait around after dark to check some of those gun emplacements. Some Spanish sack I inherited from Mr. Hamilton. I've been saving it as fitting for the occasion. Angela, my dear. Sir? Thank you, Colonel. What a pity you couldn't have made your journey with me, Mrs. Lackland. All the way from Montreal by water, except for a portage round Niagara, and on a boat fit for the ocean. I should have loved your company, Governor, although I really enjoyed my wilderness experience. You know, this great inland waterway must never be lost to England. And it won't be as long as we hold Detroit. You can rely upon my husband, Governor. I'm sure of it. The catastrophe that overtook Hamilton frightens me. It is precisely that catastrophe that dictates my every move. According to the map, there are gun emplacements up on that vantage point. Yeah, but if they are, they'll be bad. Well, I'm not aiming to attack it. I just want to make sure they're there before we head on south. Why don't you swing around and see what you can find? Right. There's my point. Come on now, lads. Why not go for half a crown this time? Uh, we can chalk it up. I'll take it out of your next pay packet. Uh. <laughs> Mm. 
It's a daring scheme, Colonel. But do you really think it's safe to withdraw so much of Detroit's garrison at a time like this? Well, the time is in our favor. With Clark on the Wabash and the river bottoms flooded, it would take him weeks to get here, even if he had the supplies, which I doubt. I only hope your intelligence reports are right. I'm sure of it, Governor. Just leave everything to Richard. Very well, Colonel. You have my approval to reduce the garrison by 50 men. I certainly hope it doesn't lead to another disaster. Thank you, Governor. Now I believe I'll say good night. Yes? I beg your pardon, Colonel, but here's a matter what can't wait. We caught this blighter here spying out our guns. Well, he looks like an ordinary trapper to me. No, he's no trapper, sir. He had these papers on him. Complete plan to the full, right down to an inventory of our supplies. Why, sir, he knows more about the place than I do myself. There does seem to be some irregularity here. Colonel, may I? How could any man get the plans to the fort unless someone gave them to him? We'll find that out shortly, Governor. Sergeant, you and your men have done well. Back to your post now on the double. Uh, yes, sir, but uh, there was another one, sir, but he got away. And there may be more. Back to your post. Uh, yes, sir, uh, but the, uh, the one who got away, sir, he was the man what brought your wife into the fort today. Sergeant, I gave you an order. Right, sir. Mrs. Lackland, if what the sergeant said is true, then you should know this man, too. Since you refuse to answer, I'm forced to assume you do. Who are you? Where did you get these papers? My dear Colonel, these documents had to come from your own files. No one but you had access to them. And only you could have... You're absolutely right, Governor. There's a traitor among us. So don't move or call for help. I've no intention of hanging. Angela, release Boone. the rope on the governor. Tie him in the chair. Gag him. Angela, we're leaving. Get what you need from your room. bungling ox out the door there. If I die for this, I shan't die alone. Hmm. Angela? Open the gate. But, sir, I thought you were... Open the gate. Yes, sir. as soon as someone discovers the governor. Oh. Colonel, that Indian back in the fort, many lives. Is he in British pay? A scout and tracker. It may make it a little more difficult. 
It's your fault this happened. I told you those plans were correct. Why didn't you believe me? If I'd have taken those plans to Grayson without checking them for accuracy, he'd have thrown them in the fire. It might as well for all the good they're going to do us. I ought to have you shot. If you did, Colonel, you wouldn't know how to get to Grayson now, would you? I've carried out my end of the agreement, and now Grayson is honor bound to carry out his. Now get us out of here. Now you listen to me, Colonel. You just resigned your commission. You have no one left to command. And from now on, you're going to take your orders from me. And the first one is put away that pistol. Now come along, Ms. Lackland. Let's just hope that canoe's where we left it. You saw the colonel and Mrs. Lackland? They have left the fort with the man called Boone. You can follow? Tonight? I... Tomorrow? A moon from now. I can follow. Good. We'll get them back, many lives. We'll get them all back. For a moment, Boone, my wife has to catch a breath. All right, Colonel, it's not far to the water. I'll go after the <laughs> Oh, Richard, my shoe's full of sand. Oh. Well, this is one journey I didn't expect to make. Nor I. But when Boone was caught with those documents, I had to do something. I know, darling, you were marvelous. Besides, if we don't outwit many lives, we're all going to hang. Tracks for all of us. I am? Tracks to where? Anywhere except along the river here. How much of a start have I got? Well, I don't know. If it's traveling alone, you ought to be able to keep your lead. See you in time. these things start doing it. Oh, oh, Richard, you got me all wet. All right. Oh. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned it. I think I'll soon get the hang of it. Colonel, why don't you... Oh, my God. Why don't you practice some other time when this noise you're making won't get us killed? Keep looking for these tracks in the dark. Even the feeble eyes of my mother could see these. Right you are. Like someone was stomping hard. Yeah, would that mean they was running? Those who are being pursued often. You're very right there, matey. Running hard over the land. I likes that better than open water. Yeah, come on now. I reckon I can follow these myself. Come on. One does not follow a trail by eyes alone. What do you mean? The eyes see tracks. The nose smells the scent of flowers not in bloom. Really? The tracks lead south. 
but the scent of flowers comes across the water. Oh, no, smell nothing. I will wait here. Run fast and bring a canoe. All right, then. You say, sir? Don't you think you'll ever need that again? If I do, I'll dig it out. I don't want him to find where we've come ashore. But surely if he's following the false trail... He won't follow it far. Come daylight, he'll start wondering why he hadn't seen a lot of tracks that look like a woman's. Then he'll think about water. He won't have any trouble finding where we left from. But if we can keep him from finding where we landed... That's that. Come along, darling. We're leaving. All right. Just let me tie my hair up first. Let's go. Sergeant Perkins? Through here. Come on, Scott. This way. Sit here and rest a spell, man. Oh! If there was anyone after us, Boone, we'd sure, surely know it by now. I think we're safe. Angela can't stand much more of this. Well, if we're going to rest here, well, I think better make sure that we're safe. What are you going to do? I'm going to do a little backtracking. You mean you're going to leave us here all alone? I'll be back. If you get hungry, you want something to chew on. There's some jerky in here. You'd better try and choke some of this down to keep your strength up. It may taste awful, but it's nourishing. Can't you tell? The hawk above can see them. We go slow. grows even stronger. They rest somewhere ahead. No! We will wait here until they move on. Suits me. off that dress. What? Here, put this on. Over here behind the rock. Oh. Now, just a minute, Boone. You're not getting orders to my wife. Your wife is reeking of perfume. Well, well of course I'm wearing perfume. Well, what else can a poor woman do when... 
when she, when she can't take a bath. And what business is it of yours, anyway? I'd say it's more your business than mine. Many lives and two British soldiers are coming up that valley. Now, many lives have been following this scent like a hound. I should have put it together sooner, except I've been surrounded by it night and day. Miss Lachlan, I want that dress. You, Richard? You better do as he says, Angela. Please but, do as I say. But what if any lives... Is... Colonel... There's something mighty strange about this. Yes, what? Many lives has followed this scent all the way. And with your wife slowing us down, they could have caught us. Why haven't they? They're probably waiting for the opportune moment. Two rifles against one pistol. One moment's as good as the next. Yes, but they want us alive. The British give traitors a trial before hanging them. Well, they may want you alive and Mrs. Lackland, but the easiest way to accomplish that is by shooting me. Now, they haven't. I don't know what you're thinking, Bone. And another thing. Many lives are blazing his trail, and I wonder why. Probably so he'll be sure to find his way back. Well, he could find his way back blindfolded. He's blazing his trail so someone else can follow him. The question is who and how many. I've no way of knowing that, Boone. I can only repeat they want Angela and me alive. You wanted this? Thank you, Mrs. Lackland. Colonel, I want you to take your wife and go up into that little valley there. There's a stream there. Follow it as far up as you can. I'll find you later. If you know there's a stream nearby, then you must be in familiar territory. I've been here before. Here, take my pack. I want to travel light. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to try to get rid of many lives. Now, you all go, and I'll stay here and watch until you're well out of sight. But Boone, if something happens to you, how will we find Grayson? You better hope nothing happens to me. But if you follow my directions, I'll take you to him by morning. Boone, you may need this. You keep it, Colonel. You're more apt to need it than I am. What's the matter now? They move again. Come! Come on, Scott. On your feet. Strange thing. They go north, and before they went south. Strange. Very strange. What's the matter now? Now they turn again. And I must be lost. Daniel Boone, lost? No. Perhaps he suspects and doubles back to throw me off the trail. But he does not succeed. Come.
was a colonel's lady throw away a lovely dress like that? Not the woman. Boom. Boom. He knows we follow. Go back. Tell the troops to advance. You'll stay here? No. I go on. Right, Scott. Come on. Keeping Boone. Oh, Richard, I'm so cold. Suppose he doesn't come. Oh, Richard, what will we do if well, suppose things go wrong? It wouldn't be for want of courage on your part, my dear. You were magnificent. You've been expecting you for hours. It took me quite a while to lay a false trail for many lives. What are you doing coming up from the south? You were behind us. Well, I must have passed you during the night. This is likely. Where did you get the rifle? Found out who many lives were blazing that trail for. And did you know there's a whole parcel of British soldiers following him? Well, then, the sooner we're under Grayson's protection, the better. Let's get out of here. Well, they won't need that many soldiers to take you alive, Colonel. Well, but they are going to need them for something else. Yes? Could be said that I'm a worse traitor than you are because I've been leading British soldiers straight to where Grayson has Governor Hamilton prisoner. Now, that's what those soldiers want, to rescue Hamilton and his men, isn't it? And I've just been wondering, Colonel Lackland, if that's not what you've been after, too. You were right, Boone. I do need this pistol more than you. Put the rifle down. In view of your suspicions, Boone, I think it best that my soldiers reach Grayson before you do. It has to be a surprise attack. You see, Lieutenant Governor Hamilton is not only a dear friend of mine, but also happens to be Angela's uncle. So we'll just wait right here. You're a very clever man, Colonel. I bet you even know how to paddle a canoe. This is like land. You know, I'm pretty sure you didn't figure on coming with me. After you handed me those documents, I figured I'd head straight for Grayson. Many lives had followed blazing a trail for the British soldiers. But then you were captured. I sure put a burr under your saddle. If you locked me up, I couldn't lead you to Grayson. You turned me loose. I had to convince you I was a bona fide traitor. The only way to do that was to help you to escape. Played your part very well, Colonel. I think you had a few suspicions, Boone. The worst of it was you kept trying to hide our trail. We were hard foot finding ways to leave uh, a trail for many lives to follow. Like the perfume. It was the very best perfume, Mr. Boone. Well, you had me fooled right up in the time I found out that I was acting as a guide for the British Army. There is some comfort in knowing I wasn't traveling with British traitors. Thank you. Treason is distasteful, but in this case, the end justified the means. I mean, your plan to rescue Hamilton? You can forget that, Colonel. Colonel, I've already warned Grayson. I don't believe you. 
Where do you think I got that gun you're holding? We may fail in rescuing Hamilton, but at least we won't go back to Detroit empty-handed. I'm taking you prisoner, Boone. Now, that'd be nice, except there's just one thing you're not counting on, Colonel. And what's that? Well, I don't think they'd like it very much. Colonel, Ms. Lackman. Sergeant. Clothesline now. I had to do the whole wash over again. Oh, and Cincinnati, to top it all off, has gone up on the price of flour. You left out Thursday. Thursday. Oh, Thursday was calamitous. The cakes I baked for Molly Malone's quilting bee fell. Oh, and butter wouldn't melt in Mrs. Gay's mouth when she saw them. And I ruined a batch of soap. Oh, and Daniel, the cabin needs chinking. Has Israel been behaving? Well, he's been trailing after Prather Beasley again. And neglecting his chores. You know, the wood box is empty. And he's completely quit bringing in the water. Well, I'll speak to him about that. Where'd you say you'd been? Hmm? I said, where did you say you'd been? Oh, Fort Detroit. And who was with you? Oh, Cully, for the most part. Becky, we need some more hot water. This is kind of lukewarm. Lukewarm, is it? Cully has been back in Moonsboro three days, and I never knew him to wear women's perfume. Don't you lie to me, Daniel. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> What's so funny? It's the second time this week that perfume's almost got me killed. <laughs>